Listen to me, Mike. I gotta do it. I'll give you till I count three, Mike. One. Two. Three. Theater 5 presents My Brother's Keeper. Dr. Somerville. Dr. Somerville, call your office. Dr. McGraw? Yes? I've uh, been waiting for you. You about through for the day? Why? Doctor takes care of people, doesn't he? I want you to come look at somebody. My car's outside. Can you leave now oh, or... Just a second. I gather this patient of yours isn't here in the hospital. That's right. Then I'm afraid you made a mistake. You see, I'm just an assistant resident here. I have no private practice. Well, here's your chance to start one, then. I don't think you understand. Yes, I do. You're the one who's slow on the uptake. Who is this patient, anyway? And if there's something wrong with him, why doesn't he come here? You can't think of a reason? No. I see you've got today's paper here. Didn't you look at it? This item here? Oh, that gang shooting upstate. Yes, I saw that. Never heard of the two men they picked up. Wait. Is there somebody else involved? You're getting warm. Who are you, anyway? A friend of someone close to you, Doc. Very close. My brother? Well, you made it. Will you stop there, or do you want to go for the jackpot? I think I'll stop there. They're driving him back to town. Should be at my place around ten. That gives us a little time. I asked you who you were before. And I said I was a friend of Joe's. Isn't that enough, or do you want me to spell it out for you? No, you don't have to spell it out. Just get out. Get out of here. Oh, Doc. You're not being a bit friendly. What's the point when we got all this time to kill before Joe gets here? You're the one who's slow now. I told you to get out. Doesn't that make it clear that I'm not going with you? We're not talking about just anyone, Doc. We're talking about your brother. Your brother who's got two slugs in it. Let him go to the hospital then. This one or another one. Look, Joe asked me to come here and tell you he needs you. Yeah, he needs you. He said... Hello, Mike. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were busy. Oh, it's all right, Dr. Rogers. This is, uh... I'm sorry. My memory for names is rather... Uh... It's okay. Eve Vollmer. Miss Vollmer, Dr. Rogers. Nice to meet you, Miss Vollmer. I'll come back later, Mike. No, no, please, Dr. Rogers. Miss Vollmer is... a practically member of the family. My brother's fiancé. Oh, really? I didn't know you had a brother, Mike. Oh, yes, I have a brother, all right. Well, since it's good news, I wanted to tell you that the board made its decision on the Darrell Award last night. It'll be $1,500 this year. And they're giving it to you. (laughs) You're kidding, Dr. Rogers. Would I joke about anything like that? There are no strings on it, but of course, we're uh, we're hoping it'll help you make up your mind to stay on here with us next year. Well, as if anything could keep me from it. Why, with $1,500 in the bank... You know, Doctor, that's the first money I ever got in my life without having to work for it. (laughs) You probably worked harder for that than any you ever earned. Well, I'll run along now. Nice to meet you, Miss Vollmer. See you, Mike. Right, sir, and thanks. Well, congratulations. Thanks. No, I mean it. In a way, it's funny, of course. Things breaking for you just when Joe's luck is running out. I suppose you think you're both getting what you deserve. It's no good, Miss Vollmer. Is that your coat? You know... This never happened to me before. A guy telling me to get out. But I'm not going. I'm staying till you say you're coming with me. Well, better make yourself comfortable then. Because you'll be here for a long time. Still here? Still here. Where you been? Outside line, please. With a patient. Um, there was a call for you, the lab. Something about blood tests. Did he say they were negative or positive? You'd make a great secretary. Yeah? Well, I wrote it down right here. In both tests, the results were... Uh, Mrs. Rodriguez, 
Dr. McGraw. No, no, she's fine. But she's been wondering why you haven't been in to see her. Oh. Well, you work that late every night? Well, you know about rules. However, if there's a good reason, they can always be broken. Well, I'll talk to the charge nurse, and you can come see your sister whenever you can make it. No, not at all. Goodbye. See? Here. The results in both tests were negative. Well, where are you going now? The men's ward. Say hello to my brother when you see him. You'll see him as soon as I do. You think so? Yeah. See you when you get back, Doc. Well, this is Dr. McGraw speaking. Tell him to call me back. Any other messages? No. That was all. Oh, thanks. Oh, where'd this coffee come from? The drugstore. Now, oh, here's the cream if you want it. Oh, thanks. You know, you really have been a help around here. Look, what did you do before? I mean, you seem... You mean, um... I seem like such a nice kid. How did I get to be what I am? All right, I'm sorry. None of my business, is that it? Look, all I meant was, where do you come from? That sort of thing. It depends where you want to begin. Do you mean the orphan asylum? That was in Iowa. Or do you mean the farm I ended up at with that pair who claimed they were my uncle and aunt? Not good, huh? Not very. I ran away, went to Chicago when I was 16. There wasn't much I could do, but I guess I was pretty. Even my so-called uncle thought so. So I got a job in a dance hall. One thing led to another till I ran into your brother. Which reminds me. Dave, please. So you don't like the way he's running his life. But he's your brother. He's in trouble and he needs your help. But I can't do what you want. I can't. What do you mean you can't? Maybe you don't know it, but there are rules about things like this. Rules that every doctor has to observe. Rules. Your brother's bleeding to death and you talk about rules. You know he can't come here to the hospital because the cops are after him. What did you tell that Mrs. Rodriguez? If there's a good reason, rules can always be broken. But this isn't just a matter of visiting hours, Eve. Something much more important is involved. Sure. Your brother's life. Oh, well. I didn't really think coming here would do any good, but I had to try. The worst part of it is I can even see your side of it, so... So long, Doc. Don't get your pills mixed up. Wait. What for? Larry, Mike again. You busy tonight? Good. I'm on duty till midnight, but something important's come up. Can you take over for me? Fine, thanks. Okay. Just let me get my bag and we'll go. Doc. Oh, Doc, you won't be sorry for this. Honest. No. I've got a feeling I'm going to be sorrier about this than anything I've ever done in my life. job like this and you need help from me? Yeah. Me and your brother both. You want to drive? No, thanks. I might take a chance with a jalopy, but not for something like this. Okay. I'll take it then. How much time have we got before he gets here? I don't know. Maybe half hour. Maybe more. Why? I'd like to stop for a sandwich or a hamburger. But you just had coffee. I know, but that's all I've had since noon. I was too busy to go up for supper. That's smart, especially for a doctor. Uh, there's a dino. We'll stop there. Feel better? Much. You know, someday I'm going to do a paper on the effects of hunger and fatigue on your state of mind. Or maybe just fatigue. You tired as all that? Oh, not right now. I got five hours sleep last night, which is pretty good. You know, I once figured that on an eight-hour average, I was about 2,000 hours behind the rest of the world. You're, you're talking about the time you've been at the hospital? Plus the time I was working my way through med school. See, my job's had to be at night. 
That's another thing I'm an authority on, jobs. For instance, night watchman. Great, you think, wouldn't you? Funny time to study. Well, I got fired from two night watchman's jobs. Too quiet. I kept falling asleep. <laughs> you, uh, wouldn't be talking like this for a reason, would you? What reason? To keep from talking, thinking about him. Joe? Well, maybe. And for a while, I was a counterman in a place like this. Then I was too busy to study, so... Do you know what the perfect job is? Night elevator operator. Time to study between calls. And if you doze off, someone's sure to ring the bell and wake you up. Did Joe know what you were doing? Working and studying at the same time? I don't know. Why? Well, you'd think you'd have kicked him with a little dog. You think I'd touch his kind of money? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it to sound bad. Uh, it's okay. You, you got a right to think what you want. Oh, I know, but the same thing doesn't necessarily apply to you. I mean... I said it's okay. You finished? Yeah. Well, let's go. Well, quite a place. This his? Mm, in a way. He pays for it. Oh, I see. There's his coat. He must be here, in the bedroom. Okay, let's go in. Just a minute, Mike. Uh, after the things you said, do you want to skip it? I can tell him I couldn't get a hold of what you. What about the things you said when I talked about rules and regulations? I was upset then, I, and I told you I understood. Yeah, well, I'm here now. Let's go in. Joe? Hi, baby. Did you get my favorite sawbones? Yeah. Here he is. Uh, sure enough, there he is. Hi, kid. Something wrong? No, except you look terrible. I was in a kind of a hurry. I didn't have a chance to stop at a beauty parlor. Well, if you ducked. Thought you always knew when to duck. Uh, so did I. None of us is perfect. Where'd you get it? In chest, in shoulder. You lose much blood? Enough. I don't have to thank you for coming here, do no, I? Let's can... take a look at you. No, don't try to sit up. <clears throat> Easy. <clears throat> you know, you really should be in a hospital, don't you? Yeah, sure. With a cop holding my hand while you work on me? Is that what you want? I just said you ought to be in a hospital. Because this one will have to come out. <clears throat> yeah, we may be able to forget about this other one, but... <clears throat> I don't have any anesthetic with me. It's going to hurt. Oh, so it'll hurt. You want water... Towels, anything like that? A few towels, yes. I'll go get them. You're going to be tempted to use that knife on my throat, kid? Turn on your side. <clears throat> Slow, easy. <clears throat> now raise your arm. <clears throat> That's it. <clears throat> that hurt? <clears throat> this is diagnostic, so don't be so darn brave. It hurts, doesn't it? Yeah, it hurts. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. Save the hero stuff for somebody who'll be impressed. Here are the towels. Will this be enough for you? Yes, thanks. Hey, what are they for? You'll see. Okay, Joe, start whistling or whatever you think will help. I'm going to work. Finished? With that one? Still have to get the other one. Well, do you have to? You said you might be able to lose I know, it. I know, but I can't. But he looks awful. Oh, he's tough, aren't you, Joe? Stop talking and finish. finish up, Buster. Right. You think you'll be able to handle the dressings, Eve? Probably won't have to change them, but if you should start bleeding again... Oh, I'll manage. Okay. Well, how are you feeling now, Joe? Beat. I'm not surprised. It wasn't that bad. You did a good job, kid. I was watching the clock. Fast. Good. Try not to move around too much. I'll give you something to help you sleep. Meantime, keep as quiet as you can. Okay. You want to talk now? About what? Us. I know what you're thinking of me. How you must have felt coming over here tonight, but... Well, I'm not much good at speeches, but thanks, Mike. Don't thank me. Not yet. Why not? <laughs> you know, when we were kids, Eve, he was about seven, I was 12, I bounced a baseball bat off his head. You remember that, Mike? I remember. Before you got here, I was thinking that well, if you don't come, it'll probably be more on account of that. My belt and you. 
and what you don't like about me. You know, what I've been doing these last few years. But I guess when the chips are down, you you can even forget that, huh? It wasn't a matter of forgetting. Where's the phone, Eve? Right here under the towel. Oh, thanks. What do you want with the phone, kid? I'm going to call the police, report a bullet wound. What's this, a joke? I'm a doctor, Joe. When somebody needs help, I help him. But when I treat a patient with a bullet wound, it's my duty to report it. You're not joking. No. Get away from that phone, Mike. How long has it been since I saw you? Six years? Well, a lot of that time, I was pretty bitter about you, especially when I remembered what it did to Mom when she found out what you were up to. I always thought that was one of the reasons why she died. And when I got here tonight, I actually saw you. It helped me realize... I said get away from that phone. You really think you can stop me, Joe? Even with a baseball... I don't know. But a slug in the gut might be harder to take than a bat. A lot harder. Joe, put down that gun. Shut up, Eve. You rat. Getting ready to call the cops and turn me in. I've got to do it, Joe. Yeah, that's what you think. My own stinking brother. Put that phone down. No, no, Joe. I said put it down, do you hear? If you don't... If you as much as reach for that dial, I'll let you have it. Joe, for heaven's sake. I say... told you to shut up. I'll give you till I count three to put it down, Mike. If you don't, I'll plug you just as sure as I'm lying here. Are you crazy, Joe? You can't... One. Big Joe McGraw, the hard guy with a gun. Two. I said two. I heard you. Well? Okay, you win. I can't do it. So go ahead, call him. Well, operator, will you get me? Never mind, forget it. Now what? I told you to forget it, didn't I? Well, that's what I'm doing. Why? Why didn't you shoot when you said you would? Because lousy or not, you're my brother. That's right. Well, it works both ways. But you just can't forget it. Coming here was one thing... Like you said, he needed you. But if you don't call, won't that make you an accessory or something? Probably. But I can't do it. What the devil's eating you, Eve? A lot of things. Things I never thought about before. What did we ever do for anyone besides ourselves in our whole lives? Nothing. But him... All these years he's been working his head off, working and studying so he could help people. All kinds of people. Well, I figure he's got something coming to him for that. Besides what we owe him for what he did just now, so... Do you? No. I say yes. He's important, Joe. He's important because what he does is important. And when you're important, you can't break rules just like that. Don't you see that? No! And even if I did, how come you're the one who's blowing a whistle on me? Because I've got to. Why? Why you of all people? You're in this too. Do you think I'd be able to do it if I wasn't? Sure, I'm in it too. Up to my neck. That's why I got a right to say something about it. And that's why I can do it. Hello, operator? Operator? Get me the police. Theater 5 has presented My Brother's Keeper, written by Robert Newman and directed by Ted Bell. In the cast, Peggy Leroy, Lon Clark, Nat Polin, and Bill Coppola. Audio engineer, Neil Pulse. Sound technician, Ed Blaney. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlasdotsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. <laughs> Executive producer for Theater 5, Edward A. Byron.
We invite your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York 23, New York. This is Fred Foy speaking. <laughs>